Hey everyone, welcome to the first video in the FANUC tutorial series. In this series, we're going to cover everything from the different connection methods to pulling information from the controller using C Sharp. So in this first video, uh, we will not be writing any code. I just want to go over the various connection methods that the FANUC controller has. And I also want to set up the computer that you'll be using to program uh, to write focus code. I'll also uh, show you some resources that will be very useful when you get deeper into writing FANUC focus code. So what is focus? If you're watching this video, then uh, you probably already know. But for those of you who don't, FANUC Focus is a manufacturer API uh, or application programming interface. It simply allows the end user to write code that interacts with the FANUC controller. This comes in handy when you want to be able to get information from the FANUC controller or if you want to send commands to the FANUC controller. The Focus API just allows us to do that in our own software projects. Just so everyone is aware, Focus is not G-Code and has nothing to do with G-Code. Uh, so if you're looking for a G-Code tutorial, then this is not it. This is also not a C-Sharp tutorial. I'm going to assume that you have a basic understanding of C-Sharp. If you don't, uh, then you may want to go find a, a basic C-Sharp tutorial and then come back to this. Let's start off by talking about the different types of connections available to the FANUC controller. We'll mainly be talking about two different types in this video series. The first type is what is called the high-speed serial bus, which I will refer to as HSSB from now on, and the other is Ethernet. HSSB is an optical connection that's only going to be available on some of the newer FANUC HMIs. If you're planning on running your code on the HMI, then you're going to want to verify that the HMI has the hardware for HSSB communications. You can check this by going into the Windows Device Manager on the HMI and checking to see if there's a driver for the HSSB. If you don't see it in there, then you probably don't have HSSB. The second type of connection is going to be Ethernet. This is slower than HSSB. However, it is more universal and it will be the one that we focus on in this video series. Unlike HSSB, which can only be run from the HMI or HSSB capable device, Ethernet communication is going to allow us to run our program from any computer that's on the same network as a CNC. If you want to follow along with this video series, you will need a FANUC controller that is connected to the network or directly to a computer. I am also going to assume that anyone watching this has basic networking experience. If you do not, then you may need to find some networking videos on YouTube or find someone who knows networking and can do it for you. Once you get your computer and the FANUC controller connected, you'll need to ensure that the computer you're using can actually talk to the controller. To do this, we just need to check the IP addresses on the computer and on the FANUC controller. In order to find the IP address of the controller, we'll need to navigate the FANUC screens. So depending on the control you have, you may see the tabs in the FANUC screen uh, either horizontally on the bottom or vertically on the right side of the screen. In either case, we're first going to press the system key on the operator panel, and then at the bottom right-hand side, uh, hit the plus key to cycle through all the tabs until you see one that says embed port. We'll then press the embed port tab, and the tabs will change. Make sure that the common tab is selected. Once it is, you should see the IP address and subnet mask on the screen. You'll want to ensure that your computer is on the same network as the controller. On some machines, you may notice that next to the embed port tab, there is an ethernet tab. If you have the ethernet tab, then you have what's called fast ethernet card. Instead of communicating directly with the controller, you can actually communicate with the fast ethernet card, which will increase the speed that you can pull information. You'll notice on the physical controller that there are two places to plug in an Ethernet cable. The upper cable is the Ethernet port, and then the lower cable is for the fast Ethernet card. You can actually use either of these ports. It doesn't really matter. If you choose to go with the fast Ethernet card, you'll need to check the IP address in the Ethernet tab instead of the embed port tab. Once you've got all that set up, go ahead and just ping the FANUC controller to make sure that you're actually communicating. After we have communication, the next thing we have to do is set up Visual Studio to be able to make focus calls. To do this, uh, you need to go to your FANUC HMI and navigate to the C Windows System 32 directory. 
In this folder, you'll see a bunch of DLL files that start with FW. You're going to want to copy all of these DLLs and just paste them onto a USB drive. Then you can take that USB drive, insert it into whatever computer you're using to program on, and paste them into the C Windows System32 folder on that computer. And what that's going to do is ensure that we have all the proper libraries to make the calls to the FANUC controller. Without them, you're going to receive an error whenever you try to make a call to the controller. That's really all we need to do for the setup. But before we get into any programming, there are actually a few resources you should be familiar with. The first one is going to be the fwlib32.cs file. And this file can be downloaded from the link in the description. You'll want to visit the GitHub link and download the file. You're going to need this to include in your project when making a focus app. The file is a link between the DLL files and .NET. This file basically contains all the functions that we are going to call. The, the next resource that I want to share with you is the focus documentation. There is a website called inventcom.net. As a focus programmer, this is basically going to be your Bible. If you have any questions on what arguments to include in a focus call, you can look it up on this website, and it'll give you all the information you need about the arguments and what you need to include. Uh, it'll even give you information on what return codes you can expect from the call and what type of machines it works on. On screen, we have the CNC all CLIB handle three function. This function simply initiates communication with the FANUC controller. In this case, we can see the function takes four arguments. The first argument is the IP address of the controller. The second argument is the port that we're going to be communicating to. The third is how long we want the timeout to be. And the last argument is the variable we want to use to store the handle that FANUC will give us. Below that, we can see that there are three error return codes that we can expect from this call and what each of them means. This is especially helpful when we're troubleshooting. As we continue down, you can see if there are any special FANUC options that need to be installed for the call to succeed. Here we can see that if we're using the embedded port that there are no special options that we're going to have to have installed. On the other hand, if you are using the fast Ethernet card, then you're going to have to have the Ethernet function installed. There is also a section that tells us if there are any FANUC parameters that affect this call and also whether or not we need to be in a specific CNC mode for the call to succeed. Uh, in this case, there isn't anything. Next, we can see some charts that tell the user what CNC and connection types this call is available for. In this case, the call is only available over Ethernet and cannot be called over HSSB, and that's because there's a separate call to obtain a handle over HSSB that we'll see later on. Further down, we can see there are examples on how to use this call, as well as a description of any of the focus-specific structures that will need to be used for the call. In this case, we don't have any focus structures that are needed, but this section will come in handy later on when we're using calls that actually utilize focus structures. Lastly, we have links to different focus functions that may be related to the one that you're viewing. This can come in handy when you're trying to find a call that obtains specific information. As you can see, this website contains more information than you'll ever need on the documented focus calls. We will be referring back to this site in future videos, so you should have this site bookmarked. Even if you aren't following along, it's going to be useful once you start actually writing your own focus programs. The final resource I want to share with you is my test focus project. Uh, this is available on my GitHub page, which is linked in the description. If you wish to have a fully functional test project to run, you can download and mess around with this. Now that we've established a connection between the FANUC controller and your computer, set up the computer to be able to make focus calls, and you've been introduced to some important resources, we can actually move on to writing some code. In the next video, we'll cover how to make a connection to the FANUC and how to obtain some basic mode and status information from the controller. I hope this video has been useful. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave me a comment in the comment section or send me an email. My email is available in the description below. Thank you and have a great day.